The second part, you guard your heart diligently, but you've also got to nurture, nurture your heart. You've got to nurture your heart constantly. There's various ways to do it, and I'll be talking about two primary ways. One way to nurture your heart is to pray the prayers of the heart from the heart. Let me give you an example. In the Bible, especially in the Psalms, there are what I call the prayers of the heart. And you don't pray those mechanically or ritualistically, but you pray the prayers of the heart from the heart. Not every one of these prayers every day, but I go through these at different times myself. But let me read those for you, these prayers of the heart. For example, Psalm 19, verse 14. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Pray that at the beginning of the day. Lord, as I begin this day, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You're my rock, you're my redeemer. I want to glorify you. That's a prayer of the heart. Another one. Psalm 86, verses 11 and 12. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I'll walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. Give me an undivided heart. Sometimes don't you feel like your heart's divided? You want to please God, but you want to please yourself, and you feel like yourself kind of being torn and almost like a walking civil war. When I feel that, I say, God, I just sense this divide taking place. Lord, give me an undivided heart that I might fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I want to glorify your name, but I need an undivided heart. Help me to pull it back together. Get it where it ought to be. Here's another one, Psalm 119, verse 36. Turn my heart toward your statutes and not toward selfish gain. We talked about greed, guarding against greed. Selfish gain, always trying to get more for yourself and making it about you. And we have that tendency. Most of us are egocentric. It's about me and it's about what I want how people are treating me and how I can get more for myself. And we're basically selfish people. So I need to say, God, turn my heart towards your statutes, towards your word, and not towards selfish gain. Another one, Psalm 119, verse 80. May my heart be blameless towards your decrees that I may not be put to shame. The Lord, show me where it's not blameless where I violated your word or one of your principles because I want my heart to be blameless before you. One more. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Search me, O God, and know my heart because truth is the heart is still deceitful and desperately wicked. Sometimes I don't know my heart. I really don't. I think I'm doing okay. I think everything's all right. But I say, God, you search my heart. You surface anything that's there that's displeasing to you. Search my heart. And then you try to open yourself up to God. Where am I not blameless? Where, where am I beginning to go astray? And that's praying the prayers of the heart. I put those on a uh, book marker, and I have those book markers, but I would encourage you to write them down, maybe on a three by five card, keep those in your pocket, put them on a mirror, take them with you, and different prayers of the heart for different days or however you're feeling, the one that's the most appropriate, pray those. Pray the prayers of the heart from the heart is a great way to nurture your heart. But now I want to tell you what I believe is the best way to nurture your heart. You've got to guard your heart diligently. You've got to nurture your heart constantly. But the best way to nurture your heart and to keep it going the way it should is by moving the scriptures 
from your head to your heart. And that is through the lost art of biblical meditation. That is a lost art, but it is the best possible way that I know to avoid the disconnect because it's very possible, especially for us in Christian work, those of us that know a lot of scripture, uh, to have a head full of scripture, but still have a heart full of sin because there's been a disconnect. And what we want to do is have congruency. We want the head and the heart to come together. And so we want to get that scripture into our heart. There's only one way to do that. And um, it is called meditation. From an unknown source, the gentleman has said, meditation is the master key that unlocks the greatest storeroom in the house of God's provision for Christians. Charles Spurgeon said, no spiritual exercise is more profitable to the soul than that of devout meditation. What is meditation? Many times when you hear the word, you think of some Eastern religion and people sit around and they have a mantra and they repeat it over and over again and meditate on it. We're talking biblical meditation. We're talking about getting scripture from your head to your heart. What is it? Here's some definitions. It's holding the word of God in your heart until it affects every phase of your life. That's meditation. Taking these verses that we talked about, holding them, praying over them, getting them into your heart. It's, uh, the dictionary says it's a form of private devotion consisting of deep, continued reflection on some religious theme. It's a process of internalizing and personalizing the Word of God. It's a process by which you think deeply about a section of God's Word and you wrestle with it. It's a process by which you chew on the Word of God. And what I say to people sometimes is I ask people the question, do you know how to worry? Everybody raises their hand. Of course we know how to worry. I said, well, tell me, how do you worry? Well, I worry by something that's bothering me and I'm just thinking about it all the time and I'm wrestling with it. I'm thinking of the pros and cons and I just go over and over and over and over. And I rehash it all the time. That's what I do when I worry. I just wrestle with it. I said, if you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. Now, get rid of the worry. Take that same process of going over and over the Word of God, chewing it up, looking at it from every possible angle, wrestling with it, praying over it, thinking deeply about it, and start absorbing it until it begins to click. The psalmist says in Psalm 39, verse 4, while I was meditating, the fire burned. I love that. While I was meditating, that's what happens. And the disciples on the Emmaus Road did not our hearts burn within us while he was talking to us on the way. Why? Because the word got from their head to the heart. They knew the facts of Scripture, but now they had personalized it. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.